Cardano, once regarded as a little cryptocurrency, has come out of nowhere to challenge bigger cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. It became a widely preferred alternative following a price surge as blockchain enthusiasts look for more climate-friendly options. So the question is, will Cardano be the number one globally? Of course it will, and let's get into the video to find out why. As always, be sure to watch this video to the end to not miss out on a single thing. Blockchain technology has come a long way in barely more than a decade. It was once regarded as an internet oddity, but now its wide variety of services such as enterprise solutions, DeFi, and NFTs are increasingly in the mainstream awareness. The promise of blockchain technology and its solutions are almost unlimited in the ways it will transform the world of business, finance, art, and others. In this industry, it is expedient to see Cardano as the lead. With the importance of blockchain industry going up, Cardano is making a great impact in the world of cryptocurrency. Cardano, of course, is a third-generation, future-proof blockchain platform that solves three big pain points, interoperability, scalability, and sustainability. It aims to fulfill different deployment use cases that are otherwise beyond the capabilities of first- and second-generation blockchains. Since its first entrance in the crypto market in 2017, Cardano ADA has seen good growth. It has had significant impact on the cryptocurrency market by bringing in new people as a result of their increased interest in the native token as more people pay attention to it. The Cardano network has always been one of the most actively developed projects in the whole industry, especially after launching smart contracts. Since the start of 2022, Cardano is rolling out a great number of new projects, updates, and solutions. The recently launched Cardano Blockchain Explorer, EUTXO, received praise from the blockchain founder, Charles Hoskinson. Hoskinson called EUTXO, whose beta version was released on June 25th, a really cool project that deserves funding from Catalyst, an inner Cardano accelerator that supports tech startups and projects built on the blockchain. I would love to see this get some Catalyst funding, really cool project, Hoskinson had tweeted. Cardano is the largest cryptocurrency to use a proof-of-stake blockchain model, which is considered a greener alternative. As crypto enthusiasts become more aware of the environmental impacts of cryptos, Cardano has upper leverage over Bitcoin and Ethereum, and this could pose a great determining factor for its success. No one has had a bigger impact on the price of Bitcoin than Elon Musk, but his concerns about the cryptocurrency's environmental impact have not been duly attended to. The Tesla chief filled the company's coffers with $1.5 billion, but he reverted his decision when he announced that Tesla would stop accepting Bitcoin for car purchases out of concern over the rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels for Bitcoin mining. Musk also pushes environmental concerns further by meeting with Bitcoin miners to discuss ways to make the cryptocurrency greener. However, those who have made a pretty profit from Bitcoin's early days in the cryptocurrency's devotees accuse Musk of ignorance over mining methods. The backlash also led to the birth of a new crypto called the F. Elon. According to a comment made by an expert, miners don't have the luxury to care about the environment because this is an extremely competitive market. All these miners are competing against each other for rewards that are available through mining, and their most important cost factor is electricity. Well, if Elon Musk is so bothered about the environmental state of Bitcoin and desires a change, he should come over to Cardano. Cardano has two vivid advantages. One, far less energy consumption, and two, staking. In the case of proof of stake, Cardano is at the forefront of this technology. When it comes to addressing environmental problems, there are no easy answers. Cardano is a decentralized platform that can replace the inefficiencies of older and legacy systems. With its sustainability potential, Cardano and other proof-of-stake protocols are considered part of the solution, rather than contributing to the problem caused by Bitcoin and Ethereum. As a matter of fact, on its website, Cardano says, We have changed science. We have changed what it means to build a global systems and sustainable models of exchange and governance. We, alongside our community and partners, are defining a new future, a decentralized future, without intermediaries in which power is returned to the individual. In the recent past, Cardano's price surged after it announced a major upgrade called Alonzo, which launched in September of 2021. This upgrade introduced smart contracts to the blockchain. Moving forward, the billionaire entrepreneur and crypto investor, Mark Cuban, 
went head to head with World Mobile CEO Mickey Watkins over the utility of World Mobile as a project built on Cardano. Historically, Mark Cuban has built up quite a reputation for being critical of Cardano and its utility, and he recently voiced his skepticism around the potential for Cardano-based projects to succeed in Africa. This prompted various Cardano advocates to speak out on Twitter to counter with their perspective on the technology's ability to deliver real-world services, to which Cuban responded that he had not seen much adoption of Cardano applications or demands for payments in ADA. Notwithstanding, this situation actually proved that Cardano supporters are ready to defend it at any time. The discussion moved on to World Mobile Token, or WMT for short, which powers the World Mobile Network, and as an example of real-world utility and value. By leveraging the power of WMT, World Mobile delivers a sharing economy that permits anyone to own a part of its network built by the people, as well as to earn income for connecting people around the world. Cuban said that WMT and the World Mobile Network need a real business model to succeed, and also asked whether it had begun to earn revenue from its users on its network. The World Mobile CEO, Mickey Watkins, did not sit still as he entered the debate, and everything got heated. He responded with a tweet, citing the company's ARPU in Tanzania of $3 per month. ARPU is approximately $3 per month. We are currently fine-tuning out sharing economy and have 150 nodes up in East Africa. This is three times what Helium is making monthly with their 500,000 nodes. Financial services are inbound, which can easily double the ARPU. Let's talk. This initiated a long and passionate debate between Watkins and Cuban over Twitter, with Cuban grilling Watkins about World Mobile's business model, and Watkins responding with data-supported arguments around utility, adoption, and scaling. Cuban was originally in doubt about the number of nodes and volume of traffic on the network, stating that the ARPU Watkins quoted nothing about adoption. Watkins replied with a map of air nodes operating in Zanzibar and screenshots of live network data that revealed thousands of unique users and the regular volume of traffic processed by air nodes on the World Mobile Network. However, it didn't end there. The conversation morphed into a technical one, with Cuban asking Watkins about the type of mesh protocols World Mobile uses, customer bandwidth, and more. Watkins proceeded with the debate by responding with a comprehensive Twitter thread that outlined everything from the 802.11 Wi-Fi standard used in the mesh network to satellite backhaul and the cost efficiency of aerostats. Cuban and Watkins also overed the feedback from end users. I don't see you retweeting anything from actual end users, which is why I'm so cynical about this and all the Cardano Africa project posts. They don't come from end users. Every great product lets the users do the talking for them, Cuban said. In response to this, Watkins linked a series of testimonial videos from users connected to and using the World Mobile Network and Zanzibar. The already overheated debate raged back and forth over multiple subjects, with Cuban asking difficult questions about various aspects of WMT and the World Mobile ecosystems, but Watkins addressed these issues accurately. At a point, Watkins and Cuban found common ground of the goals of the project. Even though our network is 12 times cheaper to build than legacy mobile networks, we are limited to a range of pricing by the local regulator in any country you launch. However, by being an MNO and an ISP, we can offset a lot of the cost for the end user. We aim to be half the price of legacy mobile networks in each country you launch, Watkins says. Now we are making progress. Thank you. Half the price is a great goal, but not necessarily low enough to reach your goal, nor a no-brainer purchase, which makes it an interesting study in network costs, marketing, and whether tokens in blockchain add or hurt the proposition to consumers, Mark Cuban finally said. With the energetic debate, Watkins and World Mobile seemed to score a few points with Cuban, who eventually commended the goals of the project and the idea of reducing CAPEX by allowing users to build out the network and its own infrastructure. But how do you see Cardano fulfilling your investment dreams? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comment section below. We'll see you in the next video, but before then, please check out our other videos to find out how Cardano is living up to the dream of being the Ethereum killer. And as always, make sure you click on the subscribe and notification buttons.